Well, I'm in the midst of a great sneaker hunt right now. I need a new pair of, uh, of running shoes. My, my old ones have, have worn out on me. And I've been looking all over the place, and as much as I need a new pair of shoes, I'm also a cheapskate. So I was looking for a, a good deal. And I ended up going over to Bob's store um, at the beginning of the week. They've got lots of odds and ends and things that are, are discounted there. And I, I found a pair that, that I thought would work for me. But I ran out of time in the afternoon. I had to go home. And if you know, those kinds of stores, they don't hold a whole bunch of any one thing. So I was getting nervous that these shoes that looked like they would work for me would, would be gone by the time I got back. So Monday night, I ended up, uh, after dinner, decided to run over there real fast to see if I could grab these, these shoes that were on the clearance aisle for like 50% off. It was great. Um, but that was when the snow had come in. So it was really nasty weather. I said, you know, I really want these sneakers. I'm going to get over there. I get over to Bob's, and it's right before closing. It's like 8.30, 8.45, something like that. They close at 9. And with the snow coming down, there's nobody in the place. It's totally empty. So much so that none of the employees were at their normal posts. They all had just kind of congregated together. They were hanging out in the men's section. And I walked by them on my way back to the shoe section in the back of the store. And don't worry, I'm going some of this, I promise. Um, <laughs> As I'm walking close to the group, though, I hear them talking, and, and specifically there's one young guy that's kind of holding court with, with the whole group. And, and you can tell he's just, he's just condescending as all get out. He's talking to this one other uh, young woman, and I overhear part of his sentence, and he says, Oh, you mean you don't speak Spanish? Oh, I do. Pobrecito, it means I'm sorry, he says to him. Now, normally, I walk right up by him, not going to say anything. I know a little bit of Spanish. And I know he's full of it. And he's being such a jerk to this, this poor girl and talking down to her so much, I can't keep my mouth shut. Now, the little kids are gone, so I'm going to give you my exact quote. Um, older kids, don't repeat what I'm going to say. Um, I walk closer, and I kind of lean in while, while the whole group is gathered together there. And I said, excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I overheard you. Well, you got earmuffs, that's good. He's got his earmuffs on. <laughs> I lean in, I said, I'm sorry, I, I overheard you. But, you know, lo siento means I'm sorry. Pobrecito means poor little you. Dumbass. <laughs> and then walked off. <laughs> Again, don't repeat that one. It's not good. <laughs> I couldn't hold back, though, because the guy was being such a jerk, and he was so full of it, he didn't know anything about what he was talking about. And he pretends like he's this great expert. How many of us have experienced somebody like that at some point in our life? The guy in the office that knows everything about everything, and he just talks all the time? Your aunt or your uncle or you know, your brother-in-law or whoever it is? That, yeah, everybody's looking at each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, that person that kind of, they don't know what they're talking about at all. And they just keep on talking and pretend like they're this great expert on things. We have that all the time in life. And we kind of roll our eyes sometimes. We get kind of annoyed sometimes. We kind of ignore the person sometimes. The time that it drives me crazy, though, is when people do it with the Bible. We've all been in that conversation, right? You're at a party, you're at dinner, you're talking to a relative or you're watching somebody on TV. Somebody is going off about what the Bible says about whatever issue it is, whether it's gun, gun control is the big issue right now, right? So they're, they're quoting scripture about gun control or, or uh, same-sex marriage or abortion or birth control or whatever it is. And they're, they're waxing poetic on what God tells us in the Bible. And there are good arguments that you can make on either side of a lot of those arguments that go back to Scripture. But I'm no great scholar, but I know enough that I know when somebody's full of it. And I don't know what they're talking about at all. And nothing drives me crazy more than somebody who starts quoting Scripture and pretending like they know exactly what they're talking about when they don't at all. Back in 1993, go back a little ways before you guys were born. But back, there was a time, back in 1993, we all wore pants that were a little bit wider, and we had pleats in our dress pants. Um, Mike Ditka, 
he uh, got fired as the coach of the Bears. And in his press conference that he gave after he got fired, as he was talking about where he was going to go next and what he was going to do, he said, but scripture tells us this too shall pass. What's the problem with that? It's not in the Bible anyway. It's something that we just say all the time. We have lots of those kind of phrases that we hold on to that aren't in the Bible at all. Hate the sin, love the sinner. You know where that's from? Mahatma Gandhi. Not the Bible at all. We have lots of those things that, that get kind of thrown out there. Or even worse, we get people who base their whole political and social and moral opinion based on one sentence that they find in one obscure part of the Bible without understanding the context or any depth to it at all. And they run with it. Or even worse, and this is what really drives me crazy, somebody who quotes something to me because they heard that it was in the Bible. They never even read it themselves. They just heard that that's what it says and how we're supposed to believe. We have a lot of people who are like that kid in the Bob story that are full of it, that are talking and have no idea what they're talking about. Now the problem is, we're no better. Because none of us know really all that well, right? We're going to have a little survey here. How many of you have a Bible in your home that is readily accessible to you? Raise your hand. All right, most of us. Don't raise your hand, Jen, because we don't. We don't. I thought about it this week. I thought I wanted to have one. Jen said she wouldn't allow us in the house. <laughs> now, we have, we have a children's Bible that, that we have. And, and I have one on my iPad. Um, but um, all my Bibles are here at church. I don't, I don't keep any of my Bibles at the, the house. Okay. So if you have a Bible readily accessible at your house, how many of you, by show of hands, read that Bible on a regular basis, at least once a week? All right, a few. Good, 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 good. All right, how many of you that read that Bible on a regular basis feel like you have a firm grasp of the context and order and, and flow that goes throughout the Bible? None. Zero. All right, let's go in a different direction. We're going to have a little bit of a Bible quiz for you. If you win, you get free communion today. <laughs> and soup and sandwiches after the service. <laughs> yeah, right? All right, what's the first book of the Bible? Genesis. Genesis. All right, easy one, easy one. Okay, what's the last book in the Bible? Revelation. <laughs> Not Revelations. Revelation. There's only one. The Revelation to St. John. <clears throat> Alright, what's the order of the four Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Very good, but they're not written or they're not, they're not included in the Bible in chronological order. What's the chronological order of the Gospels? Mark was first. Good. One of the other John was last. Good job. All right, so Mark was first. John was last. Matthew and Luke were pretty close in writing. So they're right in the middle. There. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Other easy ones for you. Let's go. Um, what did Adam and Eve eat that got them kicked out of the Garden of Eden? Everybody grab your Bibles. There are the red books that are in front of you. It says Holy Bible on the front. Grab the Bibles. Open to Genesis chapter 3. Open it up. Hold on. I'm going to let everybody get it. Genesis. Genesis. First book of the Bible. Right after the table of contents. You'll know it's the beginning because Genesis starts with in the beginning. <laughs> Chapter 3. Just says a fruit. Doesn't say what kind of fruit. It could be a, a mango or a pear or a grape. Doesn't say. But we've associated it with an apple. All right, here's another one. Easy. How many wise men came to visit Jesus? 
Open up your Bibles to Matthew. Uh, this will be Matthew chapter 2. Look it up. Look it up. Matthew chapter 2, I think. Should be right in the beginning of chapter 2. It says, wise men from the east. Doesn't say how many. Now, they, it says that they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So I guess we figured they each would just carry one and we'll be free. All right, another easy one. That's what tradition and legend tells us. Doesn't say it there exactly. We can kind of surmise from the fact that they were studying the stars that they were probably astronomers. Well, there's a legend that comes along with a fourth wise man, too, that comes in. But none of that's from the Bible. None of that comes from the Bible at all. All right, one you learn as kids. How many of each animal walked onto Noah's Ark? Two, right? Two by two, male and a female. Everybody take a look in your Bibles in Genesis chapter 7. Chapter 7, I think it's the second verse. Methodist, we're all reading the same lessons today. 
And what they did is they put a three-year cycle together of the themes that they thought were most important for us to, to learn. Anybody have a guess? What's our theme for today? What have I been talking about? What are you holding in your hand? The Bible. Okay. We're focusing on Scripture. The first lesson is Nehemiah, how he reads the Scripture to the people and he teaches them about what it means. Our Gospel lesson is about Jesus, who stands up in the synagogue. He does the same thing. He gives his first sermon. His first public sermon is one sentence long. You guys should be so lucky. <laughs> he spends his entire time reading Scripture. Because he recognizes how important it is. So that's our theme for today. Now what the Revised Common Lectionary does is it searches through the Bible for different snippets of stories that kind of go with that theme. So you get Nehemiah who's reading a couple thousand years earlier than Jesus. The problem is, how many of you know about Nehemiah? How many of you know about what was going on in Israel and Judah with the Assyrians at the time that Nehemiah was, was teaching? Not many of you at all. Okay. Not many at all. See, the Revised Common Lectionary, the, the lessons that we use for each week, it was formulated back in the 50s. And during that time, there was an assumption that most of the people, if not everybody, that was sitting here on a Sunday morning had a good working knowledge of the Bible. They understood that Elijah passed on his, uh, his cloak to Elisha so that he could be the next prophet. Understood what was going on with Daniel and with David and what was happening with Abraham and Sarah and, and all of these things. So you could take just a little snippet from here and there and most people would understand the context. The problem is that's not the case anymore. So when we jump around like we do on a Sunday morning, it just confuses you more than, than it would otherwise. So two months ago, I'm in this conference. And um, it was this conference about learning new ways of, of doing ministry. And the guy who was the keynote speaker was talking about his frustration with this, that people just don't understand the Bible anymore. And what he and some of the other uh, seminary professors did was they came up with an alternative lectionary, an alternative order of Bible verses to be read, uh, read. And what it does is it starts in September when we have rally day and when the year starts up for us program wise. And it goes through May, which is the end of like Sunday school and the end of our programming. Surprise, surprise, in September you start with what? Genesis, the beginning. And from September through December you go in order through the Old Testament. Now, you're not going to hit every story during that, but you hit some of the major stories as you go through. When you get to Christmas, you switch over to what? The New Testament. The New Testament with the birth of Jesus. From Christmas to Easter, what do you think you'd be reading? All the life of Jesus, according to one of the four Gospels. It's a four-year rotation. So each year, you read either all of Mark, all of Matthew, all of Luke, or all of John in order so that you can understand the context and the flow and the artistry of that gospel. After Easter, you go into Acts and Romans and the epistles to learn about the early church and how the early church started. And then during the summer, there's a sermon series that gets based on a theme. You do that for four years and you cover the entire Bible that way in order, understanding the context. I see a lot of you nodding. I was sitting in this conference meeting, and I wanted to smack myself on the head. How did I not think of this sooner? It just makes sense to do it that way. Maybe if we do that, and not maybe, we are going to be doing it. It's going to take a little time for us to change some of our procedural stuff, but after Easter, we're going to switch into that format, and then we're going to continue it. Uh, throughout the next few years as a way for us to delve deeper into the scripture, to understand all of those miraculous things that God is promising us. Understand the flow of God's message of salvation and forgiveness and eternal life as it unfolds throughout the ages. 
God has given us an amazing resource in the scriptures. A wonderful, formative, normative tool for us that helps to guide us through our lives. We need to learn about it more. Amen.